I'm quite relaxed to the fact that that animal is slaughtered. The animal's not relaxed, are they? <laughs> They're decapitated. Should meat products carry warning labels a bit like those on cigarette packets to warn consumers of the risk that meat poses to health and to the planet? Professors at Durham University conducted an experiment where they found people were less likely to consider having meat as part of their meal when it had a warning on it. I mean, it just sounds so obvious, doesn't it? But I wonder if that means logically that this is a policy we need to bring in now in shops and supermarkets. We know, don't we, broadly speaking, eating too much meat can be bad for us. The NHS website states eating too much red and processed meat in particular increases our risk of bowel cancer. We know the intensive farming of animals for meat can be responsible for greater CO2 emissions. And one of the warning labels, in fact, used in the tests by Durham showed a deforested area, some factory smoke in the background and a message reading eating meat contributes to climate change. So why not have those stickers on food in the shops and in supermarkets? Some say no way. How would you apply them fairly? Would you put a label on produce from a Sto Scottish chicken farmer, the same as you would for, for something from the Amazon? Do we start putting warning labels on non-meat products containing environmentally damaging products like palm oil? Do we label plastic? Do we have to label then all ultra-processed food, etc., etc.? Let's discuss this now with William Sitwell, food writer, restaurant critic for The Telegraph and judge on TV's MasterChef, and Joey Carbstrong, who's an animal rights activist. Let me go to you first, Joey. Do you think that this is the way to go? now we have them warnings like they have on cigarette packets yeah well, i think anything that encourages people not to eat the bodies of slaughtered animals is a good thing as an animal rights act activist of course but you mentioned you know it's terrible you know meat in dairy are, is the biggest cause of like greenhouse gas emissions and you know ocean dead zones and water use land use even local meat and dairy i mean terrible for the environment but I, I, and you did mention, like, did you mention pandemic risk as well, like antibiotic resistance in factory farms for pigs and, and, and chickens? I mean, this could... could you, yeah, BSE yeah. was all yeah. to do with mass mass production, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, just warning people about that I think is a good idea, but I don't think it actually the suggestion to put labels go far enough. I think we should put images of these poor animals either living in squalor like the vast majority of them do in the UK or graphic images of the, these so-called happy local free-range animals being decapitated. I mean, that would be true transparency, unlike the uh, humane propaganda that the labels on meat and dairy have these days in the UK. It's all like, you know, they, they take advantage of people's compassion and people think something nice happens to animals in the UK. I mean, it, they probably wouldn't put that kind of labelling on on products because it'd be too brutal and horrifying to show with children in the supermarket, but that should tell you everything you need to know about what we're doing to animals. Label it with proper photos, scary photos, William. I think the problem with labelling is it really oversimplifies the issues. I completely respect people if they decide for one reason or other that they... They don't want to eat meat. But there are faults on both sides. There are environmental impacts on both sides. I mean, there's an environmental impact if you leave the house, if you switch on the TV, if you use your telephone. There are, there are environmental impacts from, you know, processed fake vegan foods, mayonnaises, cheeses, shawarma kebabs, and all these terrible things that are probably going to be great. We'll look back in 50 years' time and see that the, the over-processing of food, whether it's vegan or otherwise, is one of the great causes of cancer. It's going to be one of the great scams of the late 20th and early 21st centuries, I reckon. And it's rather like, you know, putting calorie control, that's wretched policy the government implemented a few months ago in restaurants that basically creates food phobias. It's very bad for, I think, health, mental health, because it's sort of, you know, I think it's politicising some of your everyday decisions when you're going into a supermarket is not helpful because it sort of, you know, creates factions within food where what we want to do is to try and encourage people to have a holistic, open mind to be educated, to learn, as your other guest says, totally how animals are reared, slaughtered, and so on. And if you're not comfortable with it, you make that decision. But simple, simple labels that oversimplify the very complex global food system, you know, the way that animals, people are treated, the transportation, I just don't think it's helpful. What I would Joey, like to well, see hang is, on, let Joey yeah. come back on some of that. Joey? I think that the science is very clear when it comes to, to climate change and to, to pandemic risk and to heart disease and cancer, especially processed meat and colorectal cancer. I mean, they're simple, simple things. It's not overcomplicated at all. I mean, we're not talking about the environmental mental impact of stepping on an ant as you go walk to the bus stop. We're talking about something that could be the, the end of us all. And and I, I didn't hear you answer the, 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 the moral issue of decapitating local animals and putting that on the labels. I mean, that would definitely deter people from doing this because most people have a kind heart and they don't actually want to uh, 
decapitate animals. But well, so are what you saying happens, that? Let me just finish one. Let me just finish this point for one sec. Just one. It's be one sentence. Like they put RSPCA assured free range grass fed happy humane labeling on it, which tricks people and manipulates people. So why are they allowed to do that, but not the opposite? So, so uh, you're saying where animals are decapitated, we should see what a picture of their body without the head. Yeah, well, why not? Well, I mean, they put uh, that these animals are humanely raised, free range, are allowed to manipulate people. But as an investigator, we see horrible things on farms. For a restaurant uh, to do that, to, to have a menu with, with that sort of thing in on an inside page? Well, yeah, maybe we should have a picture of the 3D printer that produced your, you know, your fake vegan cheese. I mean, great. And what's the, what's the ethical with you with that? I don't... I don't have a... What's ethical about eating fake food? I think it's a terrible... Well, uh, well it's not an ethical issue. But it hasn't I'm, killed anything, I'm, William. I'm That's relaxed. the thing. Well, I don't mind about that, OK? I'm relaxed about it. I look at the sheep that graze gently opposite me where, I'm, where I am now, and I'm quite relaxed at the fact that that animal is slaughtered, turned into the, meat. The animal's not relaxed, are they? <laughs> They're decapitated. I enjoy no, he, he consuming mind. the flesh Joey, of animals. he's been very I'm honest. about it. He's I'm been honest with Joey. Honest. William would, is... He wouldn't want to be in the slaughterhouse, though, Jeremy. Neither would you. You're not, neither of you would be relaxed about having your head cut off, and we do it for a sandwich or a, or a lamb chop. It's so unjustifiable. And people don't even know because they're so ignorant to what's going on in the food system by design because they put these, these labels that trick people. No, I completely agree. I think there's huge amounts of ignorance. I totally yeah. agree that people need to understand that animals are bred for slaughter, for the for the nutritional and pleasure. Pleasure is also key because I, you know, I enjoy, and I don't want to have a huge great argument about vegan vegetarianism. I've been here before. Too late. And it's dangerous. <laughs> we know. I am relaxed about, <laughs> and I enjoy eating the flesh of animals. I like the taste of flesh and fat. Yeah, but the taste doesn't justify the decapitation, does it? Do you think, uh, one second, do you think taste justifies one of them? This is what, let me, let me just finish this point. This is one of the biggest moral emergencies of our time. If we care about ethics and morals and suffering, the most suffering, the most killing, the most brutality happens in the meat, dairy and egg industries by far. And anyone who tries to deny that is just denying reality at this point. We've got gas chamber footage of pigs screaming for their lives. We've got free range eggs footage of, of hens dying on their faces in farms. And we've got, this is a huge moral issue. And you're going to say, well, it tastes good. William, last yeah, no, one to no, you. Because I'm, I, I, I'm relaxed because I am, I'm educated. I would urge everyone to understand how animals are bred and slaughtered. And if you're uncomfortable with it, I completely respect that. I am comfortable with it, but we need to have education. If labelling helps that on all sides, then vegan food. But not photos, you know, William. I mean, uh, but do I mean, we do we have? Know, if you like, I mean, you you obviously you, you can walk into an abattoir and, and walk out the other side and have a sausage roll. I'm not like that. I don't. Yeah. Is it acceptable to say, you know, you and one can enjoy eating meat and be completely ignorant? Jeremy, we don't know your position. You you don't like slaughtering or harming animals, but you don't want to see it. And that's the same with most of the public. I would rather people weren't ignorant because actually my knowledge of knowing farmers and producers who care about their food, the more you know about it and also the understanding of that slaughter, the transportation, the better the animal, the better death it's had. And I know you other guests will not agree. Actually, no, that produces a more enjoyable yeah. and more appreciative experience of eating. Thank you very much, William Sitwell, food writer, restaurant critic for The Telegraph and judge on TV's MasterChef and Joey Carbstrong, animal rights activist. <laughs> no worries, mate. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. They cut me off at the end. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I think, I think he was very calm. He stayed calm, and he, but he was just like, I'm comfortable with it. I'm just so totally comfortable with it. And it's like, dude, like you wouldn't be comfortable if you... Like honestly, <clears throat> he that he said that he was um he recommends people become aware of what happens to animals in the food system. But if he is aware, so he's basically saying I'm aware and I'm comfortable with it. So if you are aware, like to the to the degree that I am, and you're comfortable with that, then I'm gonna say that you are a horrible, cold-hearted, callous person. Because in order to be comfortable with something so atrocious, you have to have either you you completely detached cold heart or i think you'd have to be a little bit of a sociopath psychopath some serious mental disorder to see what animals actually go through and say that you're totally comfortable with that and to be honest i don't give a shit if someone is or isn't comfortable about it whether you are comfortable uncomfortable it's not even about us it's about 
the animals who are uncomfortable with having their head cut off of their shoulders. You don't look at human rights issues and go, well, you know, I'm kind of comfortable with kids being abused. I'm kind of comfortable with this horrible atrocity. And we don't, we don't care about your comfort level about it. We care about the victim and how the victim feels. I'm sick of approaching this from, do you care about this issue? Does this make you feel bad? Oh, it makes Jeremy feel bad. It makes him, he's comfortable with it. I'm uncomfortable with it. What about the victim? Obviously, chickens don't want to die on factory farm floors and pigs don't want to be gassed to death. So shouldn't we be looking at it from their perspective? But again, it's all about it's, it's all about the labeling and the climate and, you know, and it's a it's a culture war and it's nothing. No one ever looks at it from the animal's perspective. And that's why they're always left off the table when true moral issues are discussed. And that's why I try to bring it back to the moral issue about let's show the let's show labeling. I mean, obviously, people don't want to see what happens to animals when they're tr picking up the, the meat. Honestly, I think that would be a very good deterrent. But further than that, I just honestly think that we shouldn't legally be able to do this to animals and they should have rights protecting them and that would save this whole labelling deterrent thing. We shouldn't even have a choice to be able to do this to animals. It's so horrible.